Another well-known false prophet was caught agreeing to launder more than $1 billion in cash. Yes, you heard that right, a billion U.S. dollars. God is surely exposing another false and dangerous prophet, Hubert Angel. Undercover reporters posing as Chinese criminals meet one of Zimbabwe's most senior diplomats. Yeah. I'm ambassador at large, I'm ambassador of 85 countries, but on the special envoy, I'm a representative of the president. That means I can sign contracts, I can sign treaties with government without the president getting involved. Ubert Angel is also an evangelical preacher. Angel leads the Good News Church, which has 15 branches around the world, who says he has the gift of prophecy with powers to heal the sick. Woman with a trip, Nev. Yeah. It takes the power of God, but it takes somebody to believe for something to happen like this. His prophecies include football scores from the English Premier League. When it comes to football matches, I'm on TV, live TV, talking about it's going to be two, uh, this one is going to score, this one is not going to score, and it's live around the world. We can't picture the prophet Elijah, Jesus, or any of the apostles prophesying about who would win a sports game. This is gambling and has nothing to do with Christianity. We want to pose an important question. Does God anoint and empower a criminal and charlatan to heal the sick? For certain people have crept in unnoticed. They have titles, bishop, apostle. They've crept in unnoticed. You can throw the name of Jesus around all you want. You can sing it 50 times in one song. It's coming. It's coming. And like the charismatics Jesus must have had in mind in the future, including today, they think the proof that they are His is in their prophecies their exorcisms, and their miracles. Did they really do them? Of course not. Of course not. You have to debate that? The Lord says, I don't even know you. He doesn't empower people who aren't even in His kingdom to do miracles, to cast out Satan, or, or to reveal His truth through prophecy. These are fake claims, false claims. Hell is going to be filled with people, sadly, who were involved in this prophesying exercising demons and doing miracles. False preachers like Hubert Angel have brought untold shame, embarrassment, and reproach to the name of Jesus and Christianity. Did you notice that the Al Jazeera report referred to him as an evangelical preacher? Hubert Angel is also an evangelical preacher. The Zimbabwean president appointed Hubert Angel as an ambassador. Well, we now know that Mr. Angel is an ambassador of gold smuggling. Angel was personally appointed by President Emerson Manangagwa to bring investment into Zimbabwe. He is my first ambassador at large assigned to promote Zimbabwe brand. You want a gold? Gold, we can do it right now. We can make the call right now and it's done with the okay. president of um, Miners, Miners Association right this minute. The president of Zimbabwe's Miners Federation is Henrietta Rushwea. They want to invest in gold and buy gold and maybe send a private jet, pick, picks up gold every week. That's perfect. No, that's okay. Let's do it, bro. Five million dollars can be cleaned every week. We get gold worth five million every week. We take it out, bring another five million. The ambassador is not bothered that the cash is being laundered. It's money that cannot be declared in the country of origin. We've already discussed it. That we, don't, that we, that we don't want to talk about it. He explains a plan to smuggle the dirty cash into Zimbabwe using his diplomatic status. Right now I can, I can put some sort of bag like this with 1.2 billion and put a red tape written diplomat. That's it. Under the Vienna Convention, states agree to exempt diplomatic luggage from airport searches. It's a very, very easy thing. It will land in Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe can't touch it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until I get to my house. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you can understand. Oh, okay. So they can be a diplomatic plane. Hubert Angel made this list of 30-plus failed prophecies from 20 false prophets. We were already aware that he was a false prophet, but we didn't know that he was part of the mafia that smuggled gold out of Zimbabwe, thereby contributing to impoverishing his own country. You want a gold? We can make the call right now and it's done with the okay. president of um, 
Miners, Miners Association. Association right this minute. This yeah, let me just tell this. Let me just um, call Roshan. Okay. Henrietta Rushware heads Zimbabwe's Miners' Federation. She's also the president's niece. I've got my people here. Hey, shut up and listen. Bonyara. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Let's talk business. Let's talk business. We'll talk about our stories later. Let's talk business. You want to just get God the other deals that we normally do with the people, like the one we did in Dubai, where they also want to invest in gold and buy gold, maybe send a private jet, pick picks up gold every week. That's perfect. No, that's okay. Let's do it, bro. Oh, they're taking 100 kilos every week. Okay. Okay. But why, how many? They're getting it at less 4% of the world. Yeah. Mr. Stanley is being offered to buy the gold at a 4% discount. They're saying it's very good price. I think you yeah. should have said less 3%. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. You should have said less 3%. <laughs> it was a mistake in, in, the, in the language. <laughs> because that's, that's the 1%, my 1%. You've just blown my 1%. <laughs> I'm just again like just diplomat in the country. Do you know I can carry me in a bag and nobody's allowed to touch this bag? I can carry me in a bag and nobody touches the bag. Right now, I can, I can put this bag like this with 1.2 billion and put a red tape written diplomat. That's it. He'll use his diplomatic cover to fly Mr. Stanley's $1.2 billion into Zimbabwe. So it's a very, very easy thing. It will land in Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe can't touch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do get to my house. Yeah. One time I was invited, was it two years before the, the COVID, by the Pope. And I was supposed to meet the Pope. And then the COVID happened in Italy. So the Pope literally invited me to go there. Now hear this. And I'm just thinking, I'm going to see the Pope. So I told someone who is in the ministry, like I'm meeting the Pope. I'm excited. Because I'm not thinking I'll go there and the Pope prays for me. No, I'm thinking I'll pray for him. Now hear this now. Listen. Listen. This man said, no, for a man of God to be seen with that, he's an antichrist. You can't be seen with an antichrist. I said, but I'm seen with you. <laughs> At least I'm seen with a rich antichrist. Not you, a poor antichrist. And I know immediately, immediately I heard God say to me, if at all this guy was given that opportunity, he would not have asked you. God said, why do you keep asking for permission for things I've already permitted? Nothing is more shameful and devastating than a self-proclaimed prophet stealing from his own people while millions of Zimbabweans languish in poverty. Zimbabwe's economy has been devastated by corruption and more than two decades of sanctions imposed by the United States and Europe. The local currency has no international value. The country's biggest earner of US dollars is gold. The healthcare system in Zimbabwe is horrible, and all the money false prophet Hubert Angel laundered could have been used to save many lives. One, one of the uh, people in the film talked about making millions every week. Uh, Zimbabwe has got only six central hospitals, and they require only 50, 55 million US dollars to run efficiently without any shortages for the whole year. So if somebody is able to make 20 million through smuggling of gold mm. and evading taxes with, with, with being aided by state agents, uh, it means that we don't have medication in our hospitals, not because of sanctions, but because we've got a group of criminals who are part of a political cabal, who are stealing from the state and stealing from the citizens and making sure that a lot of our people die from easily treatable diseases like okay. even cholera and typhoid when things could have been. If you're new to our channel, 
please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. They help get biblical truth to those in darkness. God bless you. On the Day of Judgment, smuggler Hubert will stand before God and give an account of thousands of children who died of treatable diseases because the money that could have been used to treat these poor children was laundered. Instead of acknowledging that he's a thief, repenting, and stepping down as a preacher, Mafia Hubert is trying so hard to justify his gold smuggling operations. Now, see, I used to sell things in my company, stuff like that, and the prison made me a salesman. You know, my duty is an ambassador, but my focus is mainly selling, and my product is my country. I'm selling the country. If you see me negotiating for deals for my country, you would think, my God, this guy is shrewd. I'm a dealer. If a fly on the wall listens to the things I say when I'm dealing with you, say, ah, you are mafia. Big difference in being diplomatic. Say, okay, so what do you want to do? Oh! Even if you want another mineral that I've never seen myself, no one has seen in my country or any other thing, I'll tell you it's in there. We will mine it together, my brother. We will find it. This man has zero shame. A so-called minister of the gospel can't even keep up with his lies because he's a salesman. What's more heartbreaking and even worse than this evil prophet smuggling gold and robbing his poor country of millions of dollars is that his brainwashed followers still defend him. Take a closer look at this comment from one of Hubert Angel's followers. Even if he killed someone, it won't stop us from listening to Prophet Hubert Angel. We know you need to make some bread, referring to making money from YouTube ads, so hence your videos. Sadly, you can't fix ignorance because someone like this does not want to know and embrace the truth. All we can do is pray that their eyes will open and they will realize they have been deceived. This type of unhealthy and ungodly royalty is prevalent in many churches. People worship their false preachers more than they worship God, if at all they worship God. How do you recognize them? Ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. They pervert the gospel and misrepresent Jesus. That's as simple as I can put it. And they must be contended with. They must be refuted. They must be exposed. Why? Because if you pervert the gospel and misrepresent Jesus, you undermine salvation. Interestingly, false prophet Hubert has released an official statement regarding the documentary. In his statement, Hubert claimed that the journalists heavily edited the documentary to scandalize his name. This goes to show how corrupt this man is. It doesn't matter whether Al Jazeera edited any part of the conversation. What Hubert said on camera is enough to implicate, prosecute, and jail him. But again, considering how corrupt the Zimbabwean government is, there's a high chance that nothing will happen to him. We will not be shocked if several other false prophets that hang out with Hubert Angel are involved in some level of scam or corruption. It would be nice if bold journalists in their countries would investigate the like of Shepard Bushiri, another false prophet accused of engaging in shady business. Controversial religious leader that is Shepard Bushiri and his wife, Mira Bushiri, will appear at the Pretoria Magistrates Court today. The Hawks arrested them just yesterday for alleged fraud and money laundering over a million. Uh, rather a hundred million rand. But Mysteriously, Bushiri and his wife escaped South Africa for his home country, Malawi. They always have connections with corrupt government officials. Confusion, anger and mystery still surrounding the departure of Prophet Bushiri to Malawi. South African authorities can't explain how the self-proclaimed prophet escaped the country. Shepard Bushiri, as he's known by his followers, says he's not running away from his trial. He's merely in Malawi to seek intervention from his home country. In addition to theft and money laundering charges, Bushiri was charged with the rape of two women. If you notice, these cult-like leaders usually take advantage of women sexually. Self-proclaimed prophet Shepard Bushiri might be facing more than just fraud and money laundering charges. Police have confirmed they're investigating the multimillionaire leader of uh, the Enlightened Christian Gathering Church for the alleged rape of two young women. One of the former congregants says 
visiting the church for salvation was all she ever wanted. She claims the prophet would stare at her during the services. It didn't take long for a church elder to tell her that Bushiri wanted to meet her at a hotel to pray. When they eventually met, Tandi fell to her knees and wept. This is when things took a sinister turn. She claims he insisted on a hug and then tried to kiss her. I'm like, no, I can't do this. You are married. He's like, don't care. Don't worry about that. I'm like, no, I can't. That's when from there he touched me here. So from there he take off the clothes. Then he raped me. He gave me my clothes. He's like, uh, he throw my clothes like take away my people are coming then he take the money he throw the money to me how much was the amount how much did he give you it was five hundred five thousand another young woman's story of being lured to a hotel is eerily similar he texted my phone and we started talking from then he said that we should get time where we meet up for coffee we talk, we study the Bible. They were going to meet at church, but then the pastor allegedly suggested they meet at a hotel. When Lerato arrived, she says she found the pastor naked. He asked me to take my clothes off. And then he told me to turn around. And I did that shaking, afraid. I didn't know what to do and then that's when he came up to me and everything happened. It's heartbreaking that these women are scarred for life and may never get justice for the crime committed against them. But when they show up on that day, verse 22 says, when they show up on that day, that day of final judgment, I will declare to them, I never knew you. It wasn't that I once knew you and you slipped, I never knew you. Depart from me into hell, you who practice lawlessness. It's about what you practice. It's not about these kinds of experiences that can be falsely induced. Literally in the Greek he says, I have never known you, never. The reality of one's spiritual condition shows up in one's behavior with re relationship to the law of God. False profession is valueless. It's a kind of profanity. It is taking the Lord's name in vain. G. Campbell Morgan, English commentator from many years back, said, the blasphemy of the sanctuary is more awful than the blasphemy of the slum. It is a sad thing to think about, but I think that will be heard by the majority of people caught up in this movement. The likes of Hubert Angel and Shepherd Bushiri must be avoided at all costs. Jesus said in Matthew 7, verse 20, that by their fruits ye shall know them. The fruits these men bear clearly show that they are wolves in sheep's clothing. The day of judgment will be very severe for them if they do not repent.